Hi, I'm Ron Spomer. You've probably heard a lot of talk about controlled round feed actions versus push feed actions. What's the difference and does it matter? Push feed and controlled feed actions are referring to how the action or the functional part of a bolt action rifle feeds the ammunition into the chamber. Now remove a push feed bolt and you see that there's nothing that can really hold the cartridge against the face of the bolt. The extractor is back in here and it doesn't grab the rim of the cartridge until it's forced when it goes in a chamber to snap over it. Now it's being held by the hook but at the same time it's being pushed off by that plunger ejector. There's a spring in there and that little plunger is always pushing against the back of the cartridge. So as soon as you pull it out of the chamber it gets ejected and that's why it's called a push feed rather than a controlled round feed. You just can't keep it held on there. What's the problem with that? Well, there may or may not be a problem. Let's compare it to the controlled round feed. When it pushes the cartridge out of the magazine, it pops up and gets underneath that big hook, and that's what holds it against the face of the bolt. So now you have controlled feed that's not going to fall off because the big claw extractor hangs onto it, pushes it into the chamber, pulls it back out, and it's ejected through this slot by a standing little ejector way in the back of the rifle, and that knocks it off. How's that going to be a problem either way? Well, I think I can show you. There is potential in a push feed for you to come all the way forward and in your excitement, imagine that somebody gets excited when they're hunting, you might not close the action and lock it down so the extractor is engaged. You come back and if the rifle is level, you've left one round in the chamber, you now pick up a fresh round and it's jammed. That's big problem if you need to shoot in a hurry or if you've got a lion charging you. How often does it happen? Well, strange things happen outdoors and if you want to make sure you're always going to bring that cartridge out, even if you don't close the bolt, the controlled round feed will do it. Now when I come forward, I've got an empty chamber. So that's one of the big arguments against the push feed. Another argument against it is that the push feed supposedly can let that cartridge fall out because it's loose in there when you push it. But I've never had it happen. As you can see here, I'm not controlling it, I don't have a hold of it, yet it's not falling out because there's enough of the cartridge up in the chamber that it's probably not just going to fall out even though it's not held by the bolt face. So let's try that again. Upside down, push slowly forward. If there was ever a chance that gravity was going to pull that thing out, it would have happened there. And how many of us ever hunt with our rifles upside down anyway? So I kind of discount that one. Normal usage, just like that. As long as you come all the way down and close that bolt and bring it back up, it's going to extract that cartridge. So, what's it going to be? Push feed action? Controlled round feed action? Is there a significant difference? Well, you get to decide. The old timers like to think that the safety lies with the controlled round feed, but you can't get that jam and there's no chance the cartridge is going to fall out. Yet, these push feeds have been shooting well for close to 100 years. Some of the popular brands are Savage, Mossberg, Remington, Browning's Able and x -Bolt. those are push feed actions and they work just great. But if you think you might get charged by a buffalo and you might get in trouble with a jam, you might want to stick with your traditional controlled round feed action. Some of those rifles are most famously the Winchester Model 70 controlled round feed. The Mauser 98 was the prototype, that's what started it all. Ruger now in their bolt action rifles are using controlled round feed as well as Kimber. So there's plenty of choices out there. I don't think you'll get in trouble either way. Today's rifles are so well made that they very rarely fail in any way. Thanks for joining me. For more information, visit ronspomeroutdoors.com.